All right, we're back. Welcome back, stream and right. recording <laughs> to proper playing or almost episode uh, two. Just... <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, uh, the the continuation of the epic cliffhanger. <laughs> yes. Of Holy night has been put up, sheep. Mm -hmm. uh, what I just wanted to point out, probably mostly for you and not necessarily the, the audience, aspects are an important deal, and I think they, since they are the main focus of the entire system, it's worth trying to basically think of every situation as how can I use the aspects, whether it's your own aspects or the scene aspects. Mm -hmm. uh, the system of compelling aspects, I will do quite a bit of that, hopefully today. But if there's anything that you think your aspect, your character's aspect applies to, please do suggest ways to compel that <clears throat> or to invoke that. Although I think com compelling is even more interesting than invoking because it creates drama and everyone likes drama, right? Uh, that said, I think we can just start. I would like you guys to copy your tokens. And I don't own it. You don't own it. <laughs> I don't own it either, I think, no. I've got um, plural tokens for me. Tokenses. You? Tokenses. Own your tokens. Tokens I. Tokens I? Moose, meese. <laughs> or is it like sheep? The plural of sheep is sheep, but it's a plural of token is token? Sheep, sheepier, sheepest. <laughs> We need oh, to stop these funny. random tangents, man. <laughs> my god. I can't. It's just, this is what goes on in my head constantly. <laughs> okay, well, they, you know, disregard that whole copying token things because that's way too premature. Um, we are going to start that by me setting the scene, essentially. I will tell you that it is currently a Saturday. A Saturday evening, in fact. The sky is overcast. It's Somewhat cloudy, somewhat cold. It's somewhat of a day, really. That's the best description that anyone would have for a day like this. And all three of you happen to be walking through Berlin. Not through, like, uh, one of the busy streets, but rather one of the side street, side streets, even. Surrounded by big apartment blocks and small offices and buildings and shops and whatnot. The sounds of traffic are still kind of echoing through the through the concrete canyons here, but there isn't really much traffic about. And with that said, I would like to ask you, why are you walking through this through Berlin on a Saturday? Where are you going? You know, help me here. Co cooperative storytelling. I mean, I mean we, are, Pumpernickel. we are obviously on our way to like we have been we have been at the Pumpernickel. And uh, and have had a few beers, but obviously we're on our way to the pizzeria. Uh, yeah, yeah, we yeah, really needed sense. to mark a bit of, that. A bit of food. Yeah, because Bjorn has been talking a lot about this new pizzeria I found. And uh, I there mean, are a lot of them. But, there, uh, yeah, found not because it's new, but because there are so many in yeah. the city. <laughs> We've looked at them. Uh, Alexander's really just most. I mean, you know, pizza's nice, and uh, and having people to talk to is also nice sometimes. Uh, yeah. 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 I mean, uh, uh, Felix is just happy being out and about a little bit because uh, <coughs> his uh, his warden bureaucrat friend, in quotation marks, has been especially obnoxious uh, earlier today about forms that need filling out and stuff. So he just wants to get away. And basically said that he had business in town. He just basically left, <laughs> and he wa he don't doesn't want to come back there until the old man has fallen asleep. So he he's ready for a night uh, night out of town, uh, out on town, basically. What uh, what time of year are we are we looking at? Uh, let's say early autumn. Early autumn. Okay. It's it's the kind of nice period of the year where it's kind of cold, cold enough that you should wear a jacket. But not really cold enough that you would feel cold while wearing a jacket. It's that sweet spot where you can really mm -hmm. cover mm -hmm. yourself in clothing and feel super comfortable while walking around. It's good. I like it. Yeah, it's a good time. It's a good time. Oh, yeah. Almost always uh, strangely dressed in the uh, slightly Roman-esque garb of, of having the uh, sort of the, the 
purple and and like red cloth with the with the XP on it. So is is that uh, like um, so? How are you? Do you have a jacket or do you just have priest robes? Yeah, I have I have that. I have I have basically uh, comfortable clothes, jeans, a jacket, uh, and then I have this sort of sash almost mm -hmm. that I just sort of put on top. Uh, so it's really fucking obvious to everyone uh, that here here walks a cardinal or some such. Uh, yeah, or just like a a, 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 a larper, really, <laughs> to some probably. So, so he looks more. It looks like most people would connect it with like Roman uh, era. Yeah. So it's, it's like a it's Berlin though. In the middle of Berlin, probably isn't even strange to. Yeah, I mean, you know, see this sort of thing. Of... But it's it, it. He certainly stands out in a crowd. That it's obvious to see. Does he have a collar? No. No, he's he's not. He he was once uh, with the church, but he was kicked out. And uh, yeah, he's sort of freelancing the good the good book now. Mm -hmm. Also, than than being paid to, really. Okay. Well, uh, Felix on his end is uh, dressed up as he usually as he usually are, uh, in uh, in dark. Uh, jeans um, that are scuffed uh, and and w clearly worn, not falsely worn, but like clearly worn, like as if he has crawled around on his knees a lot in these uh, in these uh, jeans. He has uh, cowboy boots, which uh, which are made of leather, clearly, and with some uh, some fancy like leather work uh, sort of embroidered upon them. Can't really see all of it because they sort of. You know, the, the pants sort of cover some of it. Um, he has a um, a, a dark uh, t-shirt that sort of peeks out from, from under his uh, sweater, and you might see a slight a slight bit of a logo that seems to be like Led Zeppelin or something. Uh, the uh, on top of that he has like a, a a dark shirt in a dark brown black color and his leather jacket. Uh, that also seems to be very worn and very scuffed from uh, from place to from place to place. Uh, he is also <coughs> wearing a a pendant with a, a very beautiful crystal geode in it that sort of catches the light and sparkles uh, nicely where uh, wherever he goes. Uh, and you c might also see that he has a what almost looks like a a gauntlet, but not really. It's like a, a like a fingerless glove, if you think. But it's made of uh, leather and has what seems to be like uh, small metal plates on the upside, almost like a like a parry guard on like the upper side of his uh, his hand. Pretty thin though, and it doesn't seem to impede his movements uh, any much. Uh, apart from that, he also is carrying a a staff uh, that is basically black uh, black obsidian very nicely carved it seems to be ha have been carved from like one big piece of volcanic glass um, and it also seems to sort of catch the light a little bit and and glow with uh, with red and uh, and golden like almost flames if you look closely inside of it um, and uh, it might it might indeed be that, that he also might be taken for a larper in this case as he walks with the with the staff, uh, like uh, you know, f using it almost as a walking, uh, like a walking implement, as he walks down the street here, um, the staff also end like it, it ends somewhat in a, like a somewhat sharp, like up upwards. Maybe you can maybe he could actually like poke someone with that, and it would actually hurt because it looks kind of pointy. Um, at the bottom of the staff, it is it is clad in what looks like a. Uh, it's like a like a steel, not a steel shoe. Um, you know, know what I mean? Like at the end of the quarter staff, there usually is like an, an iron a knob. Knob, thing. yeah. So he has like a, a similar knob at the end of his staff, so, so that clanks in the in the ground when he walks around. Uh, there is also like leather bindings around the staff where he usually holds it, so he can he can hold it uh, comfortably. Um, mm -hmm. Currently, he also has a pipe out, and he seems to happily be smoking the pipe as he as he walks down, talking to uh, currently talking to Alexander about something. He takes a take a, a, a smoke on the pipe, f uh, f grumbles something approvingly, and maybe takes it out to point at different things as they as they walk by. 
we're perhaps a little behind while while Bjorn sort of is leading ahead. We're not really looking where we're going because we you know don't know, and he is he probably knows. Mm -hmm. where we're going. He, uh, he, he's probably probably discussing the latest football game oh, that was on oh. uh, that was on uh, like a couple of days ago. Uh, I, uh, I, 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 you know, we probably went over to Bjorn to, to watch it. Mm -hmm. I don't have a TV, so. Yeah, Felix has one, like, in the far end of the corner of his room, but it's really old and really small, so. It doesn't really breaks, work, Bjorn, yeah. It kind of breaks a lot. Oh, Bjorn has a true. special seat for, uh, so for Felix Bjorn's to sit. sad set. for all the times when Felix has ruined his TV. <laughs> Felix yeah, he really has tries special. not to. <laughs> <laughs> he does have a special uh, a special seat for Felix when he comes over. It's, uh, like, it's this is nowhere near like anything. Discussing a solution as, like, you know, it's always whenever something exciting is happening in the game. Like, mm -hmm. they're just about to score and, and, and Felix stands up and then... Yep. And then we're like, no! No! Oh. And he's like, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Yeah, yeah but he's, he's lively discussing that with Alexander at the moment. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess that leaves Bjorn. Um, Bjorn's plowing ahead. He knows where he's going. Uh, he where at the moment he's wearing a a basically like suit trousers and shirt. He likes to wear that sort of clothes. He feels comfortable in it. But he uh, also has a a leather jacket. He uh, he doesn't seem to like the cold too much. Uh, tends to get a little sleepy when it gets too cold. <laughs> so, uh, although he won't talk about it. You might, yeah, you could guess that he's just used to sleeping when it's really cold. So he's uh, walking along. He might uh, add a few points into the conversation, but nothing in particular. He's, uh, he's thinking about the p uh, glorious pizza he's heading to. Mm. At this at this point, you know, with the puffing on his pipe, Felix will uh, will say to Alexander, "Well, I I think it is it's actually quite obvious. The uh, the judge was either blind or bribed. <coughs> I'm suspecting the whites." <laughs> so he uh, puffs his pipe. And frowns. He says, uh, "If they've gotten that far into the system, indeed, then there's not much we can do about it. At least not yet." Given that they might made a misstep. I just hope it won't escalate any further. It was clearly offside, I mean. He puffs his pipe indignantly. Come on, says, at least, my friend, you can take uh, take some solace in the fact that uh, that the judge is only the mortal judge. A uh, a snort from Felix at this point, and uh, Nos says, "I if I do believe, uh, and I think you can back me up on this, Alex. That uh, there is a special place in hell for bribed judges." You know, it's just those who refuse to repent, at least. <laughs> Maybe we should pay him a visit. He muses with a smile on his face as he blows the the smoke up into the air. Uh, the smoke for momentarily maybe forms something like a, like a a, a resemblance of of a, like a picture, or like a cat or something. <laughs> and then the wind catches it and blows it away. Mm -hmm. This is uh, perhaps, but such an action could also be problematic if he, if we are not sure then it is the wrong place to go. Besides, it would only be dealing with a symptom. Felix nods slowly. Yes, yes. It's, uh, it's, uh, yes, I, I, I like, I like the, I like it in my, my conjecture that the whites are behind it. I mean, party and sports, that's basically the same thing, right? Just looks at you. <laughs> He nods thoughtfully to himself. Yes, yes, quite. Mm. Puffs the pipe. Mm. His uh, staff clinking on the ground as they walk along. 
walking along the the gravelly sidewalk mm-hmm. with the, the odd bits of fallen fallen off like eroded concrete just you know the, the, this nice satisfying urban crunching sound that mm-hmm. reminds you of leaf but leaves but not quite it it has a different sound to it are there people around uh, there aren't any people on the sidewalk. There's the occasional car driving past. There is also a, a thick line of parked cars here, which isn't really on the map here. But that's basically ever-present in most sections of Berlin. Parking oh. space is very rare. Yeah. Right. And so you continue crunching along the gravel, sometimes changing to glass, which is not unusual, you know. It's not the not the cleanest of cities, but it's it's getting there. Two, two and a half million cars, and uh, I think half a million parking spaces. <laughs> he mumbles himself as he looks at the parked cars, steps over the broken glass from time to time. And one of those bits of glass is one that actually Ex- Alexander happens to step on in a rather well awkward fashion. He doesn't quite realize as he's walking there that it was lying in front of him. And as he steps on it, he has to kind of turn towards the wall of, of apartments to his left to prevent himself from falling. And that is where he looks into the uh, into essentially the large window of what must have been a restaurant of some sort, must have been. Because it is an utter mess. It is so much of a mess that it seems inconceivable that the amounts of glass and the wrecked pieces of furniture on the sidewalks have been unnoticed until you've stepped right on top of them. And in fact, it very much seems like Felix and Bjorn haven't even noticed yet. Um, well. Uh, you'll probably notice then that uh, that Alexander changes his posture and immediately sort of checks the place basically for if he can see, like the window is smashed then, inwards? It is smashed from the out, uh, from the inside out. Oh. And there's tons of blood. There's just the tables are overturned if they aren't smashed, the chairs are everywhere, there were tables bolted to the floor that have been ripped apart and scattered everywhere, and in the back of the restaurant, a large pool of blood, and perhaps even more, although it's hard to say from the inside. The door to the place is actually open. Slightly ajar, the door's not in the best of conditions, as if someone had had its way with that as well. And the last window to the very north doesn't look much better. No, really, Bjorn. This honey on pizza, you have me. talked it. I say it. Is you it gotta try it, it's just beautiful. She sort of uh, looks at the. looks very alertly at the. Uh, basically at the window that you're walking past. I, I guess Felix will note that Alexander is sort of s- slowing down and changing his posture. I'm also saying, saying your name. <laughs> Yeah, uh, really? he, I, d- uh, uh, I didn't hear that. But yes, he'll turn on. Yes, sort of yeah. taking his pipe out. But uh, and then he sort of basically, uh, basically, you know, like he, he's he's carrying like a box of, of like potted plants that he was going to bring. Mm-hmm. He, he wasn't really long time at the bar because he went to the morning sermon. It is Sunday after all. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then he he was going to bring some potted plants to, to sort of to some sort of plant here at, at spring. Uh, but he sort of puts it down as he just steps towards the window to to get a better look inside. Yeah, Felix turning towards Alexander probably can't miss it either. And in retrospect, how the hell did he miss it in the first place? He sort of turns around, looks at it, frowns as crumbling ruins. What's all this, Bjorn? Bjorn kind of stops and looks. Obviously noticing. Felix looks in. Is that blood? Oh, it's blood, all right, and a lot of it. Well, well. 
He, uh, oh, in, in a fairly swift motion, he basically knocks out the the ash from the pipe and basically slips it into his his pocket as he takes a step in here and looks around. Are there any uh, any uh, sign any sounds or signs of people? Uh, you could roll me an alertness, but that then? investigating the scene slightly further, approaching it, looking around, the pool of blood in the back is not just a pool of blood. There's also not just a pile of furniture, but it looks as if there are lying two bodies. All right, uh, where, the, roughly? Here. Okay. Right, right smack dab in the middle. Felix and will... something, okay. something that also jumps out to me, you immediately, written on this wall down here, in blood, presumably, it's probably not ketchup, is the following. I'll post that in the chat. To, the, to those that know, know also that only fools think they can escape the wrath of Frederick D. Ravenblood. Well, uh, Felix takes in the scene for a second, looks, you know, looks over to where the bodies are, and quickly starts stepping over there. His, uh, his booted feet moving quite nimbly over all the the trash here. I see a door over here. I'll make uh, the that, that will make, uh... Yeah, the door to the north isn't exactly a door. It's kind of like one of those, you know, series of strings with like. Mm -hmm. Let, let's let's do Felix down here first. Uh, approaching the well, mess, the bloody mess, the terribly bloody mess, and the two bodies. I would like to ask you, uh, suggest to you the following compel, because lying in those in that pool of blood are definitely two people, one male, one female, looking around 20, 15, 25, who knows nowadays. Definitely around the student age. It could very well be that Felix knows one of them oh, no. from his from his keeper of the skeptic circle. Okay. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll take that compel. You recognize the the male body, completely mangled and most definitely dead. As that's that's, you know, that's, that's, that's Martin. He'll he'll exclaim and quite loud a voice. Blood and ashes. He uh, he sort of steps steps closer over over the blood. He leans the uh, his staff onto the table as he sinks down on his like crouches down to inspect the bodies. And he mums, Martin, what on earth happened to you? Uh, I would like to investigate the bodies. Okay, while you do that, Alexander was going to. Check yes, the back he's, room. Uh, he's going to check immediately to see, like, those two are corpses, um, but there might still be someone hiding, or someone alive, or someone who needs help. And uh, this is first priority. Yeah, let's do the whole exposing thing. Uh, looking at the back room here, what you see, first of all, is not quite as bad of a mess as in the front, but things certainly aren't where they're supposed to be. There's a, this thing right here is a complicated looking oven for like making pastries, a working table with flowers spread around. These are like storage places for, for ingredients and other things. Although most of them are at the, on the floor at this point. And what Alexander also sees is a person here. A rather rugged, muscular and rather bulky man currently looking or investigating something in the corner here but there's something off about him very much he doesn't really seem to be investigating he seems to be just looking in the corner standing still and not really doing anything in fact it doesn't even seem like he has noticed Alexander at all All right. Well, uh, I would like to first and foremost uh, do an empathy, perhaps, to see if he is distressed or, like, if he appears to be in need of help. Okay. Or could I simply tell that from the way he's acting? Uh, well, he doesn't look wounded, or although his 
hands do look hurt. There might be some some rips in his clothing. But roll me the empathy. Will do. So here I have a fair empathy. Oh, now just ask for modifier, All right? Two. Well, as far as Alexander can tell from this distance, this man is the epitome of a poker face currently. He is standing there. He's not even really shuffling around. His arms kind of crossed in front of him, but he's not really moving. Huh? Also, lo- looking at him, it seems like his his hands and his knuckles, there might be traces of blood on there, certainly some splinters in his clothing as well. And he has generally has the feel of someone who you would hire to punch people. Uh-huh. All right. I know that, that kind of person pretty well, turns out. All right, Alexander will then loud enough, so he's sure the others can hear it, uh, say... Uh, Will he say? He says like, uh, "God's grace to you, uh, sir." There's been an accident here. Are you all right? The person slowly swivels around and shows. Well, now having turned around with its hands kind of crossed in the front, he is wielding a baseball bat. One that has been used a lot, quite a lot. His eyes are empty, really, glassed over, his expression just neutral. But he does very quickly start moving in a, in a sort of mechanical, almost forced fashion towards Alexander. Slowly uncrossing, uncrossing its, its arms in front of him, the baseball bat held in like a baseball bat position although the expression of him still empty uh well let's see here because i might have something that can help me with with this sort of strange happening Uh because i am i am a holy I don't know what this is. I don't know that it has a high concept that is that is sad, sort of weak to my my holiness. But um, yeah, I basically can't compel it because I don't have any knowledge of of what it is. So I suppose the next best thing is simply to prepare uh, for, for for it to attack. But he will basically basically move back a little bit and uh, and say, uh, "I mean you no harm. I understand that you can be distressed. Please, sir, do not act in violence. A solution can be found." All right, Bjorn. I would suggest that since one of two of your aspects might be relevant in this situation, you've Mm -hmm. stumbled upon a crime scene where most likely these students haven't really deserved their cruel fate. Most definitely, really. And from the sounds of it, Alexander has in the back room found someone with at least minorly violent or hostile intent. Okay. It It wouldn't be too far fetched that. Maybe that was the culprit who Alexander just found in the back room. Maybe you should rush in there immediately and, you know, that's, do whatever you think is right. That's uh, actually what I was going to suggest. Um, like, compel the... Uh, maybe not just compel uh, the never again will innocents die aspect. But also his trouble aspect comes into play. Um, perhaps he turns into a bear and just breaks through this interior wall. You know, yes, go for it. And take your fate point. Okay. Um, I see that might have could worked. I have my bear, though? <laughs> uh, I will get you your bear, yes. Thank you. There's your bear. Very yeah. small now, for some reason. Little bear. Uh, just... Oh, I don't have, like... I don't have numbers for size. I have... Oh, he might be snapped to group. Oh, it's because, yeah, this this map has a like 
Uh, Red suit. So just just approximate him. Just make him large. There you go. Yeah. Large bear. Large bear. He will, uh, yeah, break through the uh, the wall as, uh, as he can. It turns out the wall isn't really that sturdy to begin with. It was kind of the the fake brick wooden wall, and you have no problem breaking through there. Yeah. So there's Alexander standing there, the confused thug with its baseball bat wielded in a rather suggestive, well, not suggestive, but suggesting intent to use it. With the bear shooting through the interior wall, the person not really caring much. I would think that this pretty much constitutes initiative. Assuming that Bjorn actually wants to engage in hostile intent as the person is slowly walking to the north. Yeah, he would. All right. Seeing the uh, seeing the bat at very least. Uh, the initiative is nice and easy. So yes. Yeah, I uh, got two in alertness, but I got two as well. I can tell you, this guy will move last. Yeah, I can't add myself to initiative though. So I, I will add all of you. Then. Probably makes sense that Bjorn act, uh, Bjorn acts first, doesn't it? I would say so. Yeah. Sure. My my action would be to try to make sure this guy doesn't get murdered right here in front of me by this bear man. Yeah, I, I would have. I was going to suggest that as being one of your compels because this person, you know, the kind, the the kind that has made the wrong decisions, been at the wrong place at the wrong time. But That's surely something. there's there's something in there that can be can be redeemed. Yeah, I'll, I'll take it though. I'm not sure what you would want me to do other than. You don't want Bjorn to maul him to death. Yeah. You know, take that as you will. Yes, I will do that. I shall. I shall. Take that. I should take the compel. Okay. It would, however, be Bjorn who gets first act after smashing through the thin wood wall. Yeah. Um, Still don't see an initiative, not that it matters too much, but... No. What? I just... Oh, I... Yeah. Because you're all NPCs. Made us all invisible. <laughs> there we yeah, go. You're, you're all NPCs. <laughs> oh, that's Bjorn bear form. Bjorn bear form. It's, uh, you know... It's a nice last name. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the real Bjorn's out in the street. <laughs> Bjorn um, but yeah, Bjorn will uh, go up and uh, try and not so much brutally murder this guy, but definitely uh, take him down. Maybe trying to drop him to his feet and uh, like drop him to the floor. Uh, not sure what that would constitute. Uh, constitu Maneuver? Do that. Would you want him on the floor? Perhaps, yeah. You could try to block him from attacking. Yeah, if you want to drop him prone, that would be a maneuver, and he would essentially get the prone aspect. Yeah, then uh, I would do that. Probably doing it with... I can choose the skill, can't I? Uh, yeah, yeah one that makes sense. Yeah, I would probably say fist that he swipes the man's legs from under him. Alright. And as the person gets attacked, it does seem that the, the person suddenly becomes rather lively. Well, almost anyways. He certainly dodges. Or tries to. Roll your fist, fists then. Okay. Also, something I actually forgot is the scene aspects. Mm -hmm. uh, let, let's do that first really quickly. As it turns out, the entire area seems to be really hard to notice from the outside. As you very much noticed. It's an oxymoron, but you did. Mm -hmm. hardly oh, over here, there are a bunch of scattered ingredients like pepper and salt and unfinished buns and dough and whatnot. Down here, it's a bloody mess. It's literally a bloody mess. The windows over here are broken, and this complicated looking oven has seen better days. Although it is a rather impressive feat of technology, whatever it is. Let's see, uh, that's a fist of four. The thug will try to not get 
interrupted. And in fact, he does manage Ouch. to mm. jump over your swipe with sudden agility. Mm. Alexander. Alexander's so pleased by the bear, not just like killing him. Uh, and he will move to try to uh, block this man from. Can I disarm him? Is that something I do? Uh, sure. I would say that's a maneuver, and disarmed would essentially be his aspect then. Okay, I was more like trying to take away his weapon. Uh, let's see if that is an actual thing. I read it somewhere. Disarm. That's probably a thing. It sounds like it should be a thing. Disarming at the moment would be a maneuver. Right, but I would be disarming him basically. Uh, yes, he would get the aspect disarmed, which you okay. can then invoke as any other aspect once for free because you've made it. All right. It was just like so. If a guy has a gun and I take it from him, he doesn't lose the weapon bonus to his attacks. If you take it from him, that would only really be temporarily. You would take it back eventually, in a sense. I All think. Right. Well, I, I'm not sure. Disarming isn't a specific maneuver. It's a maneuver. Right, well, it still makes sense to do. So I will do that, and I will use my fists. Uh, I'm unarmed, and uh, we move in, and uh, well trained in these sorts of things. Uh, probably like do dodge under the bed, assuming the man actually swings it. Uh, why is the intent of swinging it anyway? Should we then go and, and grab it from him? Okay. Uh, two. Uh, let's see. You could invoke an aspect here, of course. But let's see how he does, because he will hold on with all his might. But he will eventually let go from, from uh, off the baseball bat, and he'll get the disarmed aspect. Which, since you did manage to beat his defense by uh, at least one, the aspect will stick around for a little bit. All right. So you, you successfully disarmed him. Take take the bed from him. Felix, you hear commotion and walls being smashed. Well, Felix is probably at this moment too absorbed in the death of a student in front of him to actually pay much attention to what is going on up there. Uh, he is very intently and focused on on investigating the scene before him, and uh, so will not like move to act for what's going on in the kitchen. Okay. Would you have an aspect that you con could consider that being an effect of the compulsion to be? Uh, deeply focused, maybe. Stop. Well, that's not an aspect you have, though. No, but, I mean, you, you compelled the skeptic circle. Yeah, I guess I guess it can still be an effect that from that. That makes sense. Like, he is he's very intent on or the body perhaps, in uh, perhaps not in my city. Well, it was the, the skeptic circle specifically that got... Oh, yeah. Uh, ...invoked. Could, yeah. So, I mean, I'm, I, would, I would interpret that as him being very concerned of the like what is in front of him and deeming that that is far more important at the moment than than whatever is going on in the kitchen it's just okay. a bear bazooka yeah i mean it's just it's just bjorn th running through a wall and then alexander being all like peace <laughs> my brothers and they're roar and it's like well uh, that has happened before so it's like every set every <laughs> other saturday night Yep. <laughs> the fag will not be discouraged from its obviously violent attention as it will swing its its fists at Alexander, trying to punch him. I will try to use my fists to defend myself. And you manage. Okay. He has strength, but he doesn't doesn't have any sort of technique at all. Bjorn. Bjorn does not like missing. So, he wants to still knock this guy on the floor. Uh, for some reason, I, I'm rolling all the minuses. He again will try to dodge your swipes and fail. Meaning yeah. that he 
does fall on the floor, he'll get the aspect prone. The question comes now that we actually do have to deal damage to stress to him to actually make him subdued, so... So, the thing with stress is, stress in general, uh, if he runs out of boxes, it doesn't mean he's dead. It doesn't even mean... well, it, obvi it probably means he's injured. But what actually happens when the stress is... when he can't take anymore, that's your choice. Mm -hmm. You can say you take him out of the fight, well, not non-violently, but non-fatally at least. You can dictate what Knock happens. Knock him out or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Running off stress just means he's out of this conflict. How? That's uh, for whoever who did it to decide. Sure. So if I beat him by two shifts, that means my normal damage plus two. Well, you were trying to maneuver on him, right? Yes, you yeah, maneuver. I was trying to maneuver him, yeah. A, a good success on a maneuver just means that the maneuver will stick around for a little, for longer. Okay, good. Cool. And you, of course, since you inflicted that um, that aspect, you can use it once for free. Same for the disarmed with Alexander. Um. So, all right, all right. Here's a question then. You can grapple in this. Yes. Um. You have to. You uh, justify it with an appropriate aspect. If he's prone, I'm pretty sure if a a bear puts his paws on the man's arms, he's not going to be getting up. Um, and use my might um, skill to uh, to hold him prone, grapple him prone, as it were. So uh, would that be another action, or would that that would be another action? Yes. Okay. I had to wait for that. Alexander. Well, he's down, so... I suppose uh, Alexander will try to basically subdue him. Not by punching him in the face and such, but dealing stress by basically trying to, to lock him so he can't, so he can't move. Okay. Yeah. Hold my fists. And he will try to deflect your attack with his own fists, but fails. That is two successes, two two shifts rather, and he'll take that stress. Do you have any extra weapon damage on your fists? Only if he is uh, a, an unholy being mm. of some sort that would be in, in against the Christian faith. Alexander doesn't get the feeling that mean people are against the Christian faith. No. Uh, Felix will, I guess, continue his investigation. Yep, he continues his investigation, mumbling and cursing to himself under his breath. These damn kids bursting through walls. Mm -hmm. uh, the Ferg will not be discouraged by being on the floor and without weapons. He will do like a, like a, he will kick at Alexander using his fists. He is angry at Alexander. <laughs> 